All right, so I thought I'd do a quick video on the uh, Hungarian Grand Prix that was yesterday. It had kind of set up to be a sort of uh, more boring Grand Prix. Um, the Hungara ring doesn't really allow for much passing. Um, it's a very tight circuit. They've kind of called it Monaco without the barriers. Um, it's, I mean, it's still a pretty quick track. There's just not a whole lot of, it's very, you know, one turn is followed by another turn. Um, even down into turn one, there's not really a whole lot of opportunity for passing. So, um, it had kind of been set up to be a more sedate race, kind of laid back, and that's exactly what it was not. The um, start was fairly normal. Um, no really big incidents, no big crashes, which was nice. Um, Vettel had kind of settled into a nice, a nice lead, blah, 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 and then a safety car came out, and that's kind of when it all really went to hell in a handbasket. The, um, Mark Webber ended up staying out, they decided to keep him out, um, so he would have great track position, so he was running around the track in first, um, and they all came in for their pits, Ferrari ended up queuing in the pit, but there wasn't really any delay, any lag at all, um, and then lining up pit, and, um, then it all started going a bit crazy, um, Kubitz's pit box was directly before the, uh, Force India pit box, and Satil was coming down pit lane, and Kubitz's lollipop man let Kubitz out, you know, raised his little stop sign, and Kubitz started to accelerate out. As Satil was coming into his pit box, they collided. Um, ended up both of them retiring. Kubitz actually went out for about eight more laps, um, but then ended up retiring shortly thereafter. And uh, the Mercedes pit crew did not get Nico Rosberg's right rear tire on, um, so he went to go leave the pits, started accelerating up to that 62 miles an hour and his tire and wheel just went bounding down pit lane. Um, barely missed, I think it was uh, the Sauber mechanics. One of them literally jumped out of the way to escape this rolling tire. Um, Rosberg ended up parking his car at the end of pit lane and um, he ended up, or they ended up getting fined, Mercedes did. Um, so that was pretty interesting. And what else happened during pit stops? That may have been it, as far as accidents go. And then under the restart, Vettel, um, in the post-interview, says that he uh, didn't know the pit car was, the, the safety car was coming in. So he had dropped back uh, behind Weber more than 10 car lengths, which is a violation of the rules. So, Weber ended up having to do a drive-through penalty, um, so pissed about it, and he really showed his lack of maturity, both um, during the race and after. He was very pouty, um, when he drove down pit lane, he was throwing his hands up in the air, um, you know, he had obviously made a mistake, or the team had made a mistake, and he was too busy being you know, a little brat about it, so not very cool there, um, but anyways, Mark Webber was out in first, and then after Vettel did his drive through penalty, Vettel was third, um, and Webber was just, Webber stayed out for 43 laps on his soft tires for his first stint, and he just was doing lap, fastest lap after fastest lap after fastest lap, and I think that really brought him in, um, to change tires. A, they had to bring him in to put on the hard compound for part of the race, it's the rule, but um, he had actually got caught up in traffic as well, I believe both of the, uh, he had passed the Hispania cars, so I think it was some of the more mid-pack mid traffic, but anyway, when he came in and put the harder tires on, he went straight out and stretched his lead over Alonzo. Uh, I think at one point it was 16 seconds, so it may have even been more than that by the end. 
but anyway, it's just a great race from Mark Webber. Um, it was pretty clear from qualifying that the Red Bulls were incredibly fast, that no one was going to be able to touch them. Uh, Ferrari were the only ones that were even close, um, and even they could, didn't really have an answer uh, to their blistering pace, but it was kind of just reeling off lap after lap uh, towards the end, and then uh, Rubens Barrichello, who used to be uh, teammates with Michael Schumacher, um, Rubens caught up with Michael Schumacher, and um, because the circuit doesn't really have a whole lot of places for passing, um, he had just been kind of tucked up behind Michael for a few laps, and uh, just kind of, you know, was looking for a way to get get by and into the points, and uh, down on the pit straight out of the last corner, uh, Michael got a little bit out of shape, uh, didn't really have a good line, and Rubens got a really good toe down the pit straight, and it ended up going to the inside um, between Michael and the concrete wall between the, uh, the straight and pit lane. And Michael nearly killed Rubens. He waited until he had... Rubens on the radio had said that Michael kept leaving the door open and then shutting it too late, basically meaning that Michael was leaving, leaving it wide open and then, you know, cutting Rubens off um, later than is really necessary or usual. And um, that's what he did on the pit straight. He had he had been kind of drifting right but he had it blocked and covered right the inside um and then rubens got on the inside and michael proceeded to squeeze him um rubens had just enough space once uh the concrete wall disappeared um to kind of swerve onto the end of the pit lane and the grass um michael ended up getting a 10 point or 10 place grid penalty for the next race after the break in Spa so then in the post race interview he was he was such an asshole he said you know Ruben should have been on the other side of me I made it clear and it's like no Michael not even close um you know you left a William sized hole there and he took it and um the gentleman and sportsman thing to do would have been um, to let him have that run. Um, he left it open and uh, Rubens took it. But anyways, he got penalized, so whatever. But now we go into this, um, I think the break is just mandatory two weeks, um, but they give like a three weeks off. So some teams were um, taking off you know, starting today, some will start a week from today, um, but we go into this that, um, Mark Webber is now the championship leader, Lewis Hamilton is no longer leading, um, and Red Bull is actually the leading man, or leading constructor, um, constructor, so, a little bit of a switch up there, um, I th believe the next few tracks are going to be geared more towards, uh, McLaren and Force India sort of higher speed, lower down force tracks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we may see another change in the championship standings, but I mean, it was a great race. It was the first one that my mom watched. Um, she was actually watching and asking questions, which was super cool. Just, you know, showing half an interest and I just loved it. And you know, when it set off, I said, well, this could be a boring race for you to, you know, your first race to watch, because there's not really going to be a whole lot of overtaking, but there was plenty of action. It was great. So I hope you guys enjoyed the race, and I will see you guys in three weeks' time in Belgium.